Hey, hello guys, this is Karthik from ExitAutomation.com and this is part 12 of our Selenium Automation with C Sharp video series. And in this part, we're going to discuss about data driven testing in Selenium with C Sharp. So, before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 11 of this series and I would request you to watch part 27 and part 28 of Visual Studio with Code UI testing video series of this Execute Automation channel since this part is going to fully rely on these two parts. So we have already discussed exclusively about reading data from an Excel sheet and populating that value into the methods with a lot of details in these two videos of Visual Studio Code UI testing video series of Execute Automation channel. So I would request you to please go and watch that. So let me flip to the browser right now. So this is our Execute Automation website. And here there is something called Visual Studio Code UI. So if you click this, you will land into this particular page. And you can see that there is two link DDT with Excel in Code UI testing with custom library part one and data driven testing with Excel in Code UI with custom library part two. So just open these two pages and you can see that we have full discussion of how these things works, how we're going to design the custom data driven library for Excel sheets and also we're going to discuss what we're going to use as a library. So we're actually going to use Excel data reader as a library to read the data out from a Excel sheet. It is actually available as open source in NuGet package and also there is a complete code for this particular data reading from Excel sheet using this particular code. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy paste these codes in our existing project which we worked in part 11 and then we'll start working from there. And if you go to the data driven testing with Excel in code UI testing part 2 you can see the rest of code. Right so this is an exclusive video and article for reading data from Excel sheet and populating the value to the code. So we can start using the code straight away from here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this code. So this full code. Right and let me go to my Visual Studio. So this is the same project which worked so far till part 11 and what I'm going to do is I'm going to populate these values the execute automation and the name initial and the middle name everything to be a data fetched from an excel sheet so what I'm going to do is first let me create a class so we're going to write it as a separate class so let's call this as excel library or excel lib right and this guy will have some methods like this and you will get some errors here of course because we have missed some references at the same time we need to add the excel reader factory which means we need to add a reference which we can do using manage NuGet package manager and here let's search for excel data reader all right so if i search this we'll get the excel data reader so if i hit install this will add a reference to my project and you can see the reference has been added for Excel Data Reader. Now if I press Control dot, you can see it brings me up using Excel. So I'm going to add that. So all the reference has been completely added. So this method is fine. So this is just to get the data out from Excel sheet and populate that as a data table. The next thing is we need to populate the value into a collection. So this is my custom class. So what I'm going to do is there is an option called copy here. So we can just copy that. It's a very painless stuff. Oh, where is the class name? Hmm. See, it's a painful stuff as well. All right. So it copied that. And then let me copy this code into my method here. Ah, what happened? It's bringing me up all the line numbers. So. Hmm. What is it bringing me up line number? Not sure. All right. And seems to be some error here. Hmm. I think we need to create list of this class. Oh, we missed that code. Alright, and then 
I'm going to copy this guy and I'm going to paste it right here again the line numbers not sure all right so these methods will work fine right now so here we can populate the data from an excel sheet with data table and then we can populate it into a collection so here we can read the data out from a collection so this is what we're going to do here right great so let's save this and then let let's move to our excel sheet so first of all we need to create an excel sheet right so let me create an excel sheet with the values which we're going to pass so the excel sheet name is going to have some values so what i'm going to do is uh, let's go to the program.cs and here the login has username and password right so let's create a column so username and password great and then i'm going to fill the form with initial middle name and what are the values available initial middle name and first name so initial middle name and first name right great so the username is going to be execute and the password is going to be automation initial is going to be kk middle name is going to be or well, let's say k k and first name is going to be karthik correct all right and then i'm going to save it somewhere else maybe i'm going to save it to my d colon so i have saved it as data.xlsx great and then what i'm going to do is we can save this program and we need to first call the excel sheet to be first initialized only then it can run so for this particular test i'm going to use the excel sheet so let's initialize the excel sheet by calling the excel lib dot populate mm, where is that method so let me go to the excel lib dot cs and this guy should be of type static and also i want this guy to be static and here it's going to be static great and then i don't want this method to be called explicitly from somewhere else so i will make this guy as private so i don't want this to be accessed from anywhere so let this be private all right and then let's go to the program.cs and now there is a method called populate in collection great and now i can pass the file name so i'm going to put the here string double quotes d colon black backslash data dot x plus x great so it has populated right now and then we can read the value for our login and for the password so how to read again it's going to be excel lib dot read data of so it's asking me for the row number so we have only one row so i'm going to pass row number as one and the column name as username right great and then i'm going to copy this guy oops and then instead of automation i'm going to replace it to password this method right similarly for initial I'm going to use initial. So, what is the value? It's initial, right? Similarly, middle name and first name. All right. So, what is this middle name? All right. So, let me paste it right here. And this is going to be middle name. And this is going to be first name. All right. Super. So, I think uh, we have all this value right now. So, if we run this test, we should able to run this test without any problem so for that let me go to the test explorer all right and then hit run selector test so before that let me close the excel sheet and then run the selector test so right now hopefully it should run fine all right it opened the browser and it should type the username and password see it typed the username and password and it not performed all the operation there and it also got passed great so if we see the output, it opened the URL and closed the browser. Great. So it is working as expected right now. So this data are right now coming from an Excel sheet 
rather the hard-coded value. So even if you change the value of the username and password in the Excel sheet, it will keep on changing. And that's the only whole purpose of data-driven testing. So if you want any more videos, guys, please don't hesitate to put a comments on the videos below in the YouTube channel. I will keep on adding more videos from there. So as of now, this is the end of basics of Selenium automation with C-Sharp. I hope we have covered almost most of the basic stuffs of Selenium with C-Sharp. So that's it guys. Thank you very much for watching this video and have a very great day.